They are terrified. They have been traveling thousands of miles through Africa and they are about to cross into South Africa illegally. How do you feel? Ante now or Chigriela or South Africa? Inano, South Africa. I know all about that fear. 17 years ago, I too sat in the darkness and waited for a sign that it was time to move. I have been travelling for three weeks now, retracing my journey as an asylum seeker. I'd fled Somalia and travelled to Kenya, then Tanzania. Now we were approaching Mozambique. I crossed here all those years ago. By that time, I'd run out of money. I was tired, lonely and scared. In this remote area, foreigners stand out. As a migrant, you feel particularly vulnerable. People are often dumped on these little islands by border officials. Hundreds have drowned and crocodiles wait for victims. We just arrived in Mozambique. We had to move quickly. This is the only vehicle leaving the river for the rest of the day. Everyone is negotiating a space. Okay, in San Sina, we have to pay the boat, guys. One second. How far is it, the immigration? I think three kilometers. Three kilometers from here? Okay, it's fine. I squeezed into a space that wasn't really there. It made a cramped journey even more uncomfortable. I definitely had some making up to do. It was time to share my biscuits. The roads in this part of Mozambique are isolated. Local bandits often rob the new arrivals, so you have to be vigilant. We made it to the town of Nampula. There is a small immigrant community here. Many of them are stuck in limbo, unable to return home. This young woman was given a way out of Mozambique, but then something so human happened. She fell in love. Aziza was about to leave Mozambique for America through a UN resettlement process. Now no process. No problem. Mm. This, because this one, he broke that process. You uh, call, mm -hmm. he tell me, mm. you, you go your family. Me now, you have this baby. This one, he say, me no like, my daughter go. And then my wife, me no go. He no like sign, my daughter go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Aziza is from Congo, Girma from Ethiopia. Just talking to each other is not easy. First, when you met, so you were talking through a translator? Yeah, translator. So how did you tell you love her? How did you tell? <laughs> <laughs> how did you tell? Which language did you tell you love her? English. English? Yeah. You say in English, I love you. Yeah. yeah. So many people are trapped on the migration trail. But every night in Mabuto, there are still those who dare, just like these people. They dream of a life in South Africa. I know I did. They are very close now. This is their final obstacle. 
كور لكن هذا السؤال هو كي وحيد بقى على اللي مصر في كذا رجال سوية. ده كان ووركسين على وحن كردي من هنا ترى. حاجة عبسين هو مش تلا. يا عبس هو مش تلا. اللي بيش رجال بيح. بس ليه ده وتجلس عند سؤال سوية يعني. ما جرا يسوي ما. وحدة. يا. ما بدو مديو. هو بعد كسر. أو إنه يسوي تجلس. The atmosphere is tense as they begin the final leg of their long journey, driving to the South African border. Final phone calls are made to loved ones, waiting for them on the other side. All phones are off and we are plunged into darkness. They are given their last instructions. They set off on foot. They know there are police everywhere. The whistle signals danger. Everyone ducks. Finally, they get the all clear and it starts moving again. On average, 100 people do this every night. It's a difficult walk in the darkness of a rocky terrain. At last, we arrive at the border fence. This is as far as I can go with them. They are now in South Africa, but there are still police to evade. Tomorrow, I'll find out how they got on. Salam alaikum. How are you doing? Hey, they made it. The fear is now gone. It's all smiles and jokes, making fun of their bad choice of footwear. Their feet may be sore, but they are smiling because they have arrived in South Africa. For a migrant, the great thing about getting into this country is that once you are here, you can become legal immediately. You can work. It's much easier to get into the system here than in Europe, for example. I was on my way to meet a Somali man who looked after me when I first arrived here. I haven't seen him for 16 years. <laughs> he opened his home and heart to me. His name is Mahmoud Timachile. <laughs> Yes, like in Ramadi, but no gray hair. I need to fear everything. So, this man has seen a lot. A lot of people have passed through him. 15 Avenue Mayfair. Yeah, generous man. <laughs> he was helping everyone. <laughs> the amazing thing about him is that he is still helping migrants to this day. Mm. 
Johannesburg was my first stop, but it was the beautiful city of Cape Town where I got my first regular job. I wasn't in the glamorous part of the city. I was 30 kilometers away, standing outside a supermarket selling crisps. You just run towards them and say, crisp, 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 crisp. One run chips, one run chips, one run. I used to work here selling chips. You know chips? Yeah, I know, I know. I, well, maybe I show you sometime. <laughs> you saw me sometime, no? That was a long time ago. Some customers, horrible. Yeah, they chase you away. Huh? Chase you away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They tell you, go away, close the window, move. Others were fine, will say thank you very much. And so, but this was my spot. This was my home for nearly two years. A lot more happened before I made the decision to travel to Britain, where I sought asylum and learned the bittersweet meaning of the word refugee. It was all such a long time ago, but the sad reality is very little has changed. Somalia is still being torn apart by war and people are still risking everything to find a way out. I'm sure if you ask a young man who is in Somalia today, uh, where I was, who is going through the same experience that I was going through all those years ago, he would, he would say, I hate everything and I hate the world and I hate everyone. And, uh, and I'm sure he would be asking himself, what have I done to deserve this? If you don't feel safe in your hometown, in your country, and you don't have anything to eat, you don't have work, you, you don't have a future. You just think, I, I need to go and try somewhere else. I should be considering myself a lucky person, and I am a lucky person. But deep down, it doesn't make you entirely happy. Home is home. You'll be missing your family, you'll be missing the people that you grew up with. I think everyone would prefer to stay home. But it's circumstances that are forcing people like me to live and go seek a better life.